eternity Oh yeah Listen Stronger Baby Than the man called Samson Samson His strength Combined with Hercules Oh yeah I want Love and hold Me My darling Darling, darling Eternally. There we go. <laughs> there we go. That's All right, now that we've got that out of the way, I'd like to welcome everyone here. I know there are many of you that have traveled far, and being in Florida in March must just be incredibly difficult. <laughs> so thank you for making that sacrifice today. <laughs> A number of you know me already, and for those who don't, uh, hello to the groom side. <laughs> I'm uh, you'll be happy to know that I've been asked to refrain from doing a Minnesotan accent today. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Phil. <laughs> but to get everyone up to speed, I have been Maddie's sister now for a little over 27 years, from when she decided that 12 months was far too long for anyone to be an only child, and showed up <laughs> to wreck my shop two weeks after my first birthday. <laughs> I didn't ask to have a little sister, and I'm very sure my parents didn't plan to give me one so soon. <laughs> but of course, when I was asked to be the one to formally welcome Maddie and Quentin into a new chapter of their lives, to help lay the foundation of the relationship they want to grow, and to introduce them to their friends and family as an official unit, I jumped at the chance to be the center of attention today. <laughs> and if you're wondering what my qualifications for this role are, <laughs> besides the whole sister thing. I'll have you know that both me and Benedict Cumberbatch are ministers of the Online Universal Life Church. <laughs> of course, there is also a little bit of sentimentality. 
Despite hair pulling, biting, reading of diaries, and then post-consumption editing of diaries to make said reader feel guilty, <laughs> I couldn't ask for a more fun, vibrant, brash, bold, witty, and smart sister. And honestly, despite appearances, Maddie may be the smarter of the two of us. Ooh. <laughs> I am still so upset that she figured out that Regulus Black was the one who stole the locket from <laughs> before I did. <laughs> However, at her very best, Maddie is like the sun, radiating energy and absolutely impossible to ignore. <laughs> <laughs> this is also why meeting Quentin was such a joy. While I haven't known him for quite as long, when you meet Quentin, it is obvious that he is boundless. I mean, he's a six foot three ray of sunshine that chases <laughs> dolphins and seals all day around for a living. <laughs> However, it is enthusiasm for the good, the nerdy, the challenging, and adventurous things life puts before him that makes Quentin shine. He excels at finding joy everywhere, including the freezing snow, the excitement of others, and prank wars that may or may not have left Maddie soaking wet in a parking lot while it was negative 10 degrees outside. <laughs> and even All with America. that uh, <laughs> prank in their past, Maddie extols his Minnesota nice nature. In fact, telling me that when they first met, she couldn't figure out what his angle was, <laughs> which uh, may say a little bit more about Maddie than Quentin. Are we so nice? <laughs> what? <laughs> but believe me, this man does have a level of kindness that deserves suspicion. <laughs> <laughs> Knowing them now, it is easy to see how they fell in love. Two goofy strangers who are bubbly and ener energetic to an almost ungodly degree, <laughs> like giant puppies. <laughs> Which is why I believe this reading they have chosen is incredibly fitting. May I present <laughs> Leanne G Husty with How Falling in Love is Like Owning a Dog by Taylor Molly. First of all, <laughs> it's a big responsibility, especially in a city like Seattle. So think long and hard before deciding on love. On the other hand, love gives you a sense of security. When you're walking down the street late at night and you have a leash on love, ain't no one gonna mess with you because crooks and muggers think love is unpredictable. Who knows what love could do in its own defense? <laughs> on cold winter nights, love is warm. It lies between you and lives and breathes and makes funny noises. <laughs> love wakes you up all hours of the night with its needs. It needs to be fed so it will grow and stay healthy. Love doesn't like being left alone for long. But come home and love is always happy to see you. <laughs> It may break a few things in its passion for life, but you can never be mad at love for long. Is love good all the time? No, no. Love can be bad. <laughs> bad love, very bad love. <laughs> love makes messes. Love leaves you little surprises here and there. <laughs> love needs lots of cleaning up after. Sometimes you just want to get love fixed. <laughs> Sometimes you want to roll up a piece of news newspaper and swat love on the nose. <laughs> Not so much to cause pain, but to let love know, don't ever do that to me again. <laughs> Sometimes love just wants to go out for a nice long walk. Because love loves exercise. <laughs> it will run you around the block leave you panting, breathless, pull you in different directions, or wind itself around and around you until you're all wound up and cannot move. But love makes you meet people wherever you go. People who have nothing in common stop on the street and talk to each other, all due to love. Throw things away and love will bring them back again and again and again. But most of all, love needs love, and lots of it. <laughs> In return, love loves you and never stops. <sighs> That's it. Let's see. It is now.
Oh, there you yeah. go. <laughs> Maddie and Quentin are so good apart, but together they are an unstoppable force of energy. <laughs> I mean, occasionally they use this energy against each other, like with the aforementioned parking lot incident. And when Maddie filled Quentin's car's air conditioner with glitter, so the moment he started <laughs> that engine, it looked like Tinkerbell had exploded. <laughs> However, on most days, <laughs> it is an energy that has fueled devotion, love, and support for one another as they embarked upon adventures together and separately for the past seven years. Whether it was Quentin going to Ecuador to study marine life and live with the Shawari people when the two first started dating, or Maddie going to Washington, D.C. to live with uh, the manatees. <laughs> <laughs> the two inundated each other with affection, understanding, updates on football games and Game of Thrones, and encouragement no matter how many miles separated them. More recently, their biggest adventure has managed to see them both in the same place. The two have built a life together on a small island with a very big cat. <laughs> they hike, they drink, they play pinball, they get excited about things like rose gold accessories. <laughs> and they come at new challenges with the same energy and enthusiasm they had when they first met. But now with a greater understanding of themselves, each other, and without the need of my expired driver's license to get Maddie into bars. <laughs> <laughs> Maddie and Quentin, Margie and Norm, Squiz beats and Big Mac? <laughs> you stand before this crowd of friends and family today to celebrate the bond you two have created. You stand here because you love and trust each other in a way that doesn't expect perfection, but leaves no room for doubt of intention. But most importantly, you stand here to announce the beginning of not one grand adventure, but the promise of many more to come to announce that you are forming a team to face each challenge head on through a combination of support, understanding, forgiveness, mm -hmm. and most of all, just trying your hardest to help the other and to speak up when you need help from them. This is going to be a new experience for both of you and something you will forge together to make uniquely yours. With that in mind, we will now have a reading from Carla Miller of the Neil Gaiman poem, Wedding Thoughts Are What I Know About Love. <laughs> This is, this is everything I have to tell you about love, nothing. This is everything I've learned about marriage, nothing. Only that the world out there is complicated and there are beasts in the night and delight and pain. And the only thing that makes it okay sometimes is to reach out a hand in the darkness and find another hand to squeeze and not to be alone. It's not the kisses or never just the kisses, it's what they mean. Somebody's got your back. Somebody knows your worst self and somehow doesn't want to rescue you or send for the army to rescue them. It's not two broken halves becoming one. It's the light from a distant lighthouse bringing you both safely home because home is wherever you are both together. So this is everything I have to tell you about love and marriage nothing. Like a book without pages or a forest without trees. Because there are things you cannot know before you experience them. Because no study can prepare you for the joys or the trials. Because nobody else's love, nobody else's marriage is like yours. And it's a road you can only learn by walking it. A dance you cannot be taught. A song that did not exist before you began together to sing. And because in the darkness you will reach out a hand, not knowing for certain if someone else is even there, and your hands will meet, and then neither of you will ever need to be alone again. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, I got excited. <laughs> Thank you. I try that. All right. <laughs> when I talk to Maddie and Quentin separately about why they're here today, and what they see in each other. They both brought up the other's kindness, their sincerity, a zest for fun, silliness, and the extraordinary. <laughs> but most importantly, they brought up the unwavering belief that the other one was there to support and encourage them. Each mentioned the other being there when they were scared and unsure, <laughs> and yet each one only saw braveness in the other where they saw weakness in themselves. <laughs> Today, the two of you are making a promise. It's not a promise to t stay together no matter what, 
It's not a promise to sweep the bad under the rug and forget it exists. It's not even a promise to put the other's happiness above your own, though that's not always a terrible idea. <laughs> it is a promise to simply try, to try and see each other as equals, to try and help each other with whatever they need, and to try and trust that that person is working just as hard as you are. Some days, this may be harder than others, because that's how life is. But this promise is one built on mutual respect and love, and you guys have already built an excellent foundation for that. Before you make this grand promise, though, I'd like to read a poem by Harold Pinter called, It Is Here. What sound was that? I turn away into the shaking room. What was that sound that came in on the dark? What is this maze of light it leaves us in? What is this stance we take to turn away and then turn back? What did we hear? It was the breath we took when we first met. Listen, it is here. And I read that because while the promise you make is to do the dirty, sometimes fun, sometimes not, work of maintaining a trusting relationship, my hope for you is that you retain that first spark of joy the two of you had at the beginning of your relationship. That electrifying energy that is seeing you through your youth and beyond, and that first breath you took when you first met. Aww. May I please have the rings? Huh. <laughs> it's happening. It is happening. It's happening. Maddie, if you could take this ring, oh. place it on Quentin's finger, and repeat after me. You got it. With this ring, I, Madeline Alice Casey, with this ring, I, Madeline Alice Casey, okay. take you, Quentin Gordon Miller, take you, Quentin Gordon Miller, for my lost, lawful husband, for my lawful husband? Yeah, that's yeah, okay. <laughs> for my lawful husband. <laughs> to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better and for worse. <laughs> for richer, for poorer. For richer and for poorer. In sickness and health. In sickness and in health. I will love and honor you all the days of my life. I will love and honor you all the days of my life. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. <laughs> <laughs> if you could take this ring and place it on Maddie's finger right. and repeat after it. Did great. With this ring, I, Quentin Gordon Miller. With this ring, I, Quentin Gordon Miller. Take you, Madeline Alice Casey. Take you, Madeline Alice Casey. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. For richer and poorer. For richer and poorer. I will love and honor you all the days of my life. I will love and honor you all the days of my life. Oh, <laughs> Until death do us part. Until death do us part. Now the power vested in me, I now pronounce you. Oh, okay, so I now pronounce you, husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. All right. <laughs> <laughs> For the first time as a married couple, Maddie and Clinton. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, darling, my darling, baby, eternally. Oh, yeah. Listen, stronger, baby. Than the man called Samson. With his strength combined with Hercules. Oh, yeah. I want love and hold me. Eternally, oh yeah. Now listen to me, honey. You gave me all the love I need. Oh yes, you did. And the way you kissed me, my darling, 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 it's heavenly. Oh yeah. But last night. So willingly, 
and forever The feeling will linger on for eternity Thank <laughs> you.